the first question will be addressed to Mike Doyle. And he has a leprechaun in front of him, so that means he's first. That leprechaun will be moved to his left to signify the second question uh, starting person. The first question, Mike. The Mission Lakes restaurant seems to be operating in perpetual loss, and our GM and food and beverage manager and their staff are working hard to improve revenue and profits. At the same time, our members' food minimum is only $240 per year. At typical 2019 restaurant prices, this equates to about a four-person dinner twice a year. Would you be an advocate for increasing the annual food minimum to the higher amount and why? Mike? I'm not, I don't think my mic's on, but I think that that's one of the, uh, the decisions that the club has to make when we look at ways to try and balance the uh, financial operation of the club going forward. The, uh, to, the, to the point that was made, our F&B minimum is very, very low when you look at you know, any other club uh, in the Valley and just in general with restaurant operations. If you look at club data from across the country, something like four or five percent of the clubs across the United States break even in the restaurants. The other 95 percent recognize that it's an amenity for the members, and that there will be some subsidy involved in running a food and beverage operation for the club members. And I think that this is an amenity that we have and that we absolutely need to do everything that we can to mitigate the, the cost that we have with it. But it is a club amenity I think that is good for Mission Lakes to have. Thank you, Mike. Ray? Okay, I don't know if my mic's on or not. How do you turn it on? Oh, it's up on top. Just as a note, the uh, when you're done speaking, uh, it, it's a good idea to shut the mic off to avoid the feedback. Okay, uh, as far as raising the uh, food minimum goes, I mean, to me personally, uh, it wouldn't be a problem because uh, uh, we're done with that pretty quick and we do use the restaurant quite often. But I think, uh, while I think raising the food minimum might be a good idea and probably would be a good idea, I would have a problem uh, doing that or committing to that until uh, we've seen improvements in the uh, service, improvements in the food that would justify that and not, you know, be telling our members that we want you to go in there and spend your money, but uh, maybe we haven't done our due diligence to uh, improve the product and the service to the point where it would justify that. So if we improve the product and the service to uh, that uh, particular level, then um, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with raising it some, but uh, I would, I would uh, be a little hesitant right now to do that. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Greg. I agree with the Ray on some of what he said there. Uh, I, to raise the food minimum right now, I mean, I don't, when the service and the food hasn't been good, that's why the restaurant isn't doing well. So that something needs to be done about that. And we have a lot of members here but we've had a lot of experience. Maybe we should uh, uh, tap in and get some suggestions from them. I know there are some of them out there that have been in food and beverage and, and made their living that way, and they, and they might have some good insights in order to <coughs> turn the ship around there. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, if we improve the food and the service, I mean, naturally, the, what it costs us to run a restaurant will come down because people will come here and want to spend their money and they'll want to eat. So that's, that's my thoughts on that. Thank you, Greg. Tracy? The restaurant is a disaster. <laughs> Has been for over 10 years. You're losing 200 grand a year. You want to call it amenity? Well, amenity is a business term for losing money. What you need is to get people in there that know that business and can turn it around quickly. I've never heard it put better, but we got to put warm butts in cold seats. I've already talked to people. Uh, they are ready in, to go in and fix this restaurant. Not talk about it like ad hoc committees or other meetings, but they're going to roll up their sleeves and they're going to get the job done. And this can happen quickly. Thank you. Tom. Okay. Ryan? No. 
Okay, I'm on. Okay. Uh, I've got to disagree with Tracy. Uh, the uh, losses are budgeted this year down to $110,000. Uh, the average loss on a club of our size or any club is about $80,000. So we're not that far off of what the average subsidy is for an amenity. And it is an amenity. Uh, you know, you can either go for a restaurant experience or you can go for a uh, club experience. And I think our club is it's a club experience. People come here to, uh, they hope to get a $40 steak for $25 and socialize and the club makes up the difference for that. As far as raising the food minimum, uh, I would be for it, not very much, but I mean we can always go 5% or so. I don't think that would hurt anybody. I do agree uh, there's things that can be fixed. We're high in, we're pretty high in labor. Uh, we've got 80, I think 80 cents of every dollar brought in is for labor. So that's, uh, if we can fix that somehow, that's what we need to do. Uh, that's about it. Thank you, Tom. The next question is from the uh, audience, from the member, and it's in the same nature as the first question, so I would think it's appropriate to ask. <coughs> if elected, what will you do to fix the restaurant from being so inconsistent to make it consistent operation? We as members have a restaurant to come to and enjoy ourselves. The second part is, how will you hold yourselves and management accountable? So that question is for Ray. Okay. Well, when it comes to the restaurant, yes, it has been very inconsistent over the years. Uh, you know, I've been here 14 years, and uh, it, over the years, it just seems to have uh, gotten more and more inconsistent on the quality of food, and and sometimes the service. But I. I you know, we have, we have some good people that work here. I mean, we really have some good employees that work here. Uh, they, it seems to always be a problem with um, the scheduling or the way things work or the way the number of people that come up. up. And, uh, you know, a lot of that comes back to, um, you know, management, making sure that we have, you know, uh, proper staffing when it's supposed to be there. Also, and, and, and that costs money. So you know, Brian's trying to cut the budget and trying to you know cut down that loss, you know, that uh, 200 to 110 or whatever it is right now loss. And so it's it's scheduling, it's training, it is it is it is all of that, and uh, that goes from the board direction to, to David or to Brian of what he needs to do and what he needs to focus on that restaurant. So thank you, Ray. Uh, Greg. Well, I think we have some good people as well, but I don't think we have some people that are really versed and know how to run a restaurant, and that's obvious by what's been happening. So I think if we get some people who do, and we have, like I mentioned before, we have some members that have been very successful in this area and have their own restaurants, and maybe we can put together something here to provide some guidance to see if we can turn the ship around in that way. So that, that would be my plan. All right, thank you. Tracy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could you reread the question? Yes, I will. The question is, if elected, what will you do to fix the restaurant from being so inconsistent to make it consistent operation so we as members can have the restaurant to come to and enjoy ourselves? The second part of the question is how will you hold yourself and management accountable. Well, I said elected. Okay. Well, as I said before, uh, I've talked to people who are ready, willing, and able to take this on to fix this, fix it quickly. We will have a good meal and good service at a reasonable price. You will have to get reservations to come up here for the restaurant. If you were here when I was here 20 years ago. We had a five-star restaurant. Good food, great service, 
at a reasonable price. Just because we're only losing $110,000 this year, you figure that we have not hired an executive chef for seventy-five or 80000 That's where that figure is coming in. So you're not gaining or losing anything. You just don't have an executive chef. When I'm on here, uh, I will make sure that uh, once this is up and running, that management continues uh, to make sure that this is a good, profitable restaurant. and. We will also oversee from time to time, if there's a problem, we will come back and fix it and train these people to give us what we actually want. Okay, thank you, Casey. Tom? I've almost forgot the question, but I, can, I think I got it. I, I, you know what, we, we've got a lot of good people. Uh, the labor force, uh, I see they're making changes to keep people here. We get good servers, and they go somewhere else. And that's, that's the way it is. Uh, to make it better, I think we need uh, some accountability. Um, managers, there's managers, there should be, I don't know where I came from, you had evaluations and you had goals. Uh, and that should be looked at, and uh, they need to uh, fulfill the goals. Again, it's an amenity. Uh, you can. Say what you want, but I don't think this restaurant is going to make money. 75% uh, of the restaurants don't make money. If you want it to make money, you're going to have to be hard pressed for it to make money. It's 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 a amenity. It, it's where we come and we socialize and we have a good time and we get a good cheap meal. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Tom. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Way to go, <laughs> uh, I, I think that uh, accountability is a key in the restaurant operation, and that you know Brian is the the manager that we've hired to you know to be accountable for that operation. I think it's the the board's decision or the board's position to support him and what his efforts are and to provide broad direction on where we want the restaurant to go. I know that his initial charge was to cut the losses in the thing we've cut. You know, 100, 150 grand out of the restaurant subsidy, which has been a huge first step. The the balancing act in running this operation is that it's a, a service model that one night we might have 12 people in for dinner, and the next night we're going to have 45 people in for dinner that didn't make reservations, and the 45 people walk in and then they want to complain about the level of service because we only have one waiter in, and it's it's a balancing act and it's a very tough bubble to stay on top of for, for Brian and his staff and I think that there's uh, you know probably some member issues with it that uh, you know if, if we did a better job of making reservations and letting people know when we were coming up it allows the restaurant a better opportunity to staff to be able to service everybody and I think that uh, it's an amenity and we need to support it but we need to make sure there's accountability we do everything we can to mitigate this to mitigate the subsidy Thank you, Mike. I would like to do one more fixed question and then we'll ask a question to the audience. So this question is for uh, Greg. It may not be generally known that 20% of the houses at Mission Lakes Country Club are being used for rentals. These rentals can sometimes present significant challenges for our club to collect fines since half of the ACC warnings and fines are attributed to these rentals. As a candidate and a longtime member, what long-term effect do you think these rentals are causing or will cause to Mission Lakes Country Club? That's great. Well, having been on the ACC committee for a long time, I can tell you right now that the biggest problems we have there are the rentals. Those are the ones that don't do the upkeep, paint the houses, you know, keep the yards clean and stuff, and, and that's why some of the neighborhood around here doesn't look very good. And it's the same ones over and over. And plus, you get people in there that uh, that are you know make a lot of noise. They they have cars that leak oil all over the street and so forth. I mean, the renters are a big problem. I've put together a lot of stuff here that I've been uh, working on with the board, and we're changing the uh, the sign up for the renters. To make it a little more difficult here to now we're required to keep track of the rentals here. So I think that there should be an application fee 
to pay for our administrative uh, time here to keep track of the rentals. And also, we need to get a tighter rein on what's going on there. I want the renters to have to actually sign for the rules and regulations because they're the people that are actually living here. I think they should come for an orientation at the office, sign for the rules so they know what the rules are. And that should be a part of our deal. So there's a lot of things in the work that this board has been working on and we spoke to the attorney about. So hopefully we can make some changes there. Thank you, Greg. Tracy. If you rent your house, is this on? If you rent your house, you need to be a responsible landlord. We're not going to be disciplining the renters. We're going to be going after the landlords. And I'm talking about big fines. To get their attention, clean it up. We are not running a Section 8 housing out here. This is going to be nice, clean, upkeep, so we can all be proud of it. I don't know how many of you folks live next to renters or have renters next to you or across the street, but it's not a pretty picture. So, we're all members here. Everybody who owns the houses are, are members. Landlords, you can do what you want. I put a time uh, restriction on how long they can rent or <coughs> how long after they buy they can rent, but to come in here and speculate and use our club to make money, this is not going to happen. So we're going to pull the reins tight and make everybody, especially the landlords, accountable. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, rentals, yeah, they, they are a big problem. Um, I work also with the ACC. Last month, uh, we had quite a few fines. 75% of the fines went to renters or vacant lots. That's a huge. Uh, I think the big problem is short-term rentals. I mean, you have good, for long-term rentals, there's a lot of good renters out there, and then you have some that aren't. But it's the short-term rentals where we have problems. We have problems if there's a property manager, because the property manager, it appears that they only care about the money. They don't, they don't, you really can't get their attention until you find them. Once you find them, then they'll go out and do the work for you. So I would hope that we keep on looking. I've been working with the office. Um, we still need to have some renters own up, the landlords that they are renters. And as soon as we get that good number, uh, we can turn this around. Thanks, Tom. Mike? Yeah, I agree that it, uh, the, the rental issue here does create a lot of problems. The, a lot of the solutions that we can come up with, unfortunately because of where we live in California and the real estate laws and everything, it involves a lot of legal effort to determine what you can do and what you can't do. Any of the changes we make, many of them are going to be grandfathered in and there's no quick fix to anything. So I think that we need to you know, come up with a cohesive plan on where we want to go secure sound legal advice on how to get there. And then most of the changes, a lot of those come into the CCRs, present a case to the membership that they'll vote on to support changing what the ownership uh, rights and abilities are at the club. And until we do that, a lot of it's, uh, we're, we're, we're dealing with a very tough issue because we don't have the teeth in our CCRs to enforce it. Thanks, Mike. Ray? Um, yeah, I've, uh, I, you know, I, I, have, I have friends that have purchased houses in here and they rent them out and uh, you know I get I get that um, we, we see a lot of problems there but I you know I'm not ready to like demonize all the renters out there though because we have some you know responsible people I know they have responsible people in their houses um, you know the big the big problem with it is when something like 2008 hits and all of a sudden the price of everything goes out of out of, you know the basement um, you need people to come in and purchase up some of those houses. You need people, to, and we had a lot of people that came in and did that. And that's okay, because that helped stabilize uh, Mission Lakes a little bit, because they're still, yeah. once they buy those houses and they're renting them out, they're paying, they're paying us the monthly dues, rather than just, you know, walking away from the house and us not being able to collect on those, uh, those monthly dues. But they're, 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 we do have to get a, um, a handle on who is renting, 
and uh, how, you know the, how many owners are. We do need to hold those owners responsible for what is happening at their place. Oftentimes, the owners have no clue, and we need to make them aware of that and, and make them known to them that they're going to be responsible for the things that happen on their property. But they are an important part of stabilizing the price of housing around here. So. Okay. Thank you.